Hello everyone, my name is Arjan and I was asked to design and make the trophies for this year's Slug Wizard event. In this video I will show you how I've made these and I'll tell you how you can enter if you want to win one of these. Enjoy! But first I think it's a good idea to tell you a little bit about the Slug Wizard competition. It is an open miniature competition uh, spawned from the creative mind of Brian from the account at iBrewTiny on Instagram. Last year, entrants were asked to create a slug wizard to enter in the competition. But Arian, what is a slug wizard? A slug wizard can be anything you want. Check out last year's entries, link in the description below, uh, to see all the crazy stuff people came up with. I loved seeing all the creative ideas last year and I can't wait to see what this year brings. The event starts June 21st and it ends on September 21st. For more information on the event, check out all the links in the description. Everything you need to know should be there. This year's edition is called Slug Wizard 2 Rise of the Squid Gnomes. I spent a long time trying to come up with a concept for the trophy, but all of my ideas were very leading towards what I thought that a slug wizard or a squid gnome would look like. I didn't want my style of sculpting to be the main part of the trophy, but I still wanted the trophy to be thematically fitting. Luckily, after a walk on the beach after a storm, I found exactly what I needed. I found tons of shells and snail shells and realized that they would work perfect for the trophy. I decided to make an obelisk using the shells in the negative space of the stone. I made a quick sketch and used it to start cutting the obelisk out of XPS foam. I imagine this would have been a lot easier with a foam cutter, but the box cutter worked out great. After some sanding, I had a perfectly pristine obelisk. Beautiful. And then I started destroying it. All joking aside, it is a lot easier to create the obelisk shape and then remove material to add the shells than it is to try and sculpt the obelisk around the shells. I used hot glue to attach all the shells trying to fit them snugly together. Using green stuff I then sculpted all sorts of tissue, slimy bits, tentacles and eyes between all the shells. I also filled gaps and other problem areas that would cause difficulties with molding and casting later on. I did add a cute little squid in the central snail shell to create some sort of focal point for the trophy. I know I said I didn't want too much of my own style in the sculpt, but I do feel like it makes the trophy a lot better. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. Before pouring the silicone, I covered the entire sculpt with a mixture of PVA glue, paint and water. Uh, silicone can react badly to some materials, causing it not to cure properly. By covering it completely, I would be sure that the silicone cures and that I don't have to clean up a big mess of uncured silicone. Hello everyone, this is Editing Aryan here. Um, unfortunately, I lost all of the footage of me pouring the silicone. Uh, which is very unfortunate because it was the it's the biggest mold I've made so far and it went really well um, But I do want to take this time to direct you to the channel that taught me almost everything I know about uh, silicone and resin and that is Robert Talone um, His uh, videos are very very instructive and incredibly fun to watch and uh, I highly recommend to check him out and uh, he, he can help you with almost all the problems you might encounter while pouring silicone or resin. Go check them out. Anyway, here you can see me demolding the silicone. The casing is made out of cardboard covered with packing tape so that it is very easy to remove from the silicone. To remove the sculpt from the silicone, I cut the back side of the mold. As you can see, I'm not cutting in a straight line, but rather jagged. This slightly jagged cut will make it a lot easier to realign the two surfaces for casting, which helps out tremendously for making good castings.
To cast the trophies I used an acrylic porcelain plaster. I find this plaster to be a lot easier to cast than resin and it is also a lot cheaper. Another benefit is that it is a lot heavier than resin too, making the final casts almost feel like they are actual metal. Acrylic plaster can be a little bit fragile when you are casting thinner parts, but luckily this is a rather solid sculpture. I poured each trophy in several small batches so that I could make sure the plaster was properly mixed. Also, working in small batches helps me see possible problems early and prevent major spills or leaks and wasted plaster. The first cast I pulled out of the mold had several bubbles in it, making it unusable, but for the next pours I made sure the plaster was a little bit thinner and I tapped the mold to make sure the bubbles would flow to the surface. I think using a pressure pot would be even better, but unfortunately I don't have one. After a quick black base coat I painted on a layer of gold, followed by a wash, and finally I dry brushed a couple of times for a nice golden sheen. I did the same with silver and bronze to end up with three finished trophies. And that is how I've made these trophies. I cannot wait to see what people will make for this year's Slug Wizard event and who will win one of these. I want to thank Brian for organizing this event, uh, all the hard work he puts in and for asking me to design these prizes. I had a blast sculpting these, so thank you so much for the opportunity. I also want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you feel inspired to join in this competition. If you do, again, all the links should be in the description below. On another note, um, it would mean the world to me if you could uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more of these crazy projects. I also share a lot of stuff on Instagram, so you can follow me there. Anyway, um, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.